Hey guys, this is Miss Smith here. I'm about to read to you um, the passage we're using this week for ILA. Uh, this passage is called Feathered Friend by Arthur C. Clarke. Um, we're going to be using this passage as well for a quiz that you're going to be taking um, later on this week as well. So I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. You guys follow along however you need to. You can pause at any time to take notes. This is completely at your own pace. Um, before I get started, though, if you'll notice, there is bold print and then non-bolded print. So I'm going to be reading both of you or both paragraphs like um, to you guys. And that is just going to have um, the non-bolded part just kind of helps break down what I've read in the bolded part, if that makes sense. Um, so just follow along, pause as needed. Um, and then maybe I would make some stop and jot notes off to the side um, so you can keep up with what's going on in the story. It's not very long. It's about a page and a half or so. Um, so I'm going to begin reading Feathered Friend by Arthur C. Clarke. To the best of my knowledge, there's never been a regulation that forbids one to keep pets in a space station. No one ever thought it was necessary and, ha and even had such a rule existed, I am quite certain that Sven Olsen would have ignored it. The narrator describes Sven, his fellow crew member, as a weary little fellow. He is most skilled construction worker at the space station. He is also the owner of a pet named Clarabelle. I first became aware that Clarabelle was aboard when I was sitting in a little cubby hole laughingly called my office. When I heard the musical whistle beside my ear, I assumed that it had come over the station intercom and waited for an announcement to follow. The whistling is not a sound from the intercom. However, it continues and the narrator gets his first view of Clarabelle, a small yellow canary. Eventually, Spin admits to bringing Clarabelle aboard. He had smuggled her up on the last ferry from Earth when he came back from leave, partly, he claimed, out of sheer scientific curiosity. He wanted to see just how a bird would operate when it had no weight but could still use its wings. Clarabelle thrives and becomes a general pet to the crew. The crew is able to hide the canary when VIPs from Earth visit the space station. One day, there being no day and night in space, the narrator wakes up with a headache. At breakfast with the crew, Spin enters with Clarabelle, who is motionless. The station's doctor listens for a heartbeat. He doesn't hear one, but adds that he is not experienced with animals. Give her a shot of oxygen, suggested someone, somebody. To our delighted surprise, she re revived at once, beaming broadly. Sven removed the mask and she hopped onto his fingers. She gave her series of come to the cookhouse boys, trills, then promptly keeled over again. The narrator still not feeling well, thinks he, too, could use some oxygen. He suddenly realizes what the problem is. Jim, there's something wrong with the air. That's why Clarabelle's passed out. I've remembered the miners used to carry canaries down to warn them of gas. Jim, the engineer in charge, claims that an oxygen problem would be impossible. The station is equipped with alarms. However, after Jim checks the system, he admits that part of the air that part of the air cleaning system had frozen and the alarm had somehow failed to go off. All of the expensive equipment had let them down. Without Clarabelle's warning, they might have all died. So now, if you visit any space station, don't be surprised if you hear an inexplicable snatch of bird song. There's no need to be alarmed. On the contrary, in fact, it will mean that you're being doubly safeguarded at particularly 
no extra expense. And that is the end of our story. If you need to replay it, you may replay this reading of Feathered Friend.